been a while since we heard from convicted murderer Scott Peterson. Now it seems he's back with a message. Apparently he wants to say thank you. Canadian anti-death penalty organization is hosting a web page for Peterson featuring a personal letter straight from death row. In it, Peterson thanks his supporters for writing to him in prison, even if he's not able to write back. Quote, at mail call, I'm encouraged by and enjoy hearing from people. I wish I could respond to and express my gratitude and continue to correspond. However, people having sold my notes and sometimes fabricating content preclude me from doing so. It's an irritating, unfortunate situation. I'm tremendously appreciative of your kindness. It has such a wonderful, positive effect upon our family. The group hosting the website says Peterson plans to publish similar public messages a few times a year. Joining me now is Dave Parkinson from the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. They're running the Peterson webpage. And Vernell Crittenden, the San Quentin Printon prison spokesperson who often fills us on what's happening at death row, where Peterson has recently uh, been moved from an adjustment center to an individual cell. All right, thank you both. Uh, to both of you, appreciate it. All right, Mr. Parkinson, let me ask you this first of all. It seems Scott Peterson appears more worried about someone profiting from his words than he does about putting the word out. Um, well, rightly so. Uh, I mean, since the uh, it's more important, media you think whether began again. You think it's more important whether people are profiting than whether he can supposedly defend. Well, his no, but uh, well, no, but certainly uh, when people are selling his letters on eBay or murderabilia sites, trying to make a profit from it, and uh, since this media fiasco began uh, with us posting this on the internet, we've actually had uh, some legitimate news organizations in the U.S. We won't mention who've offered us money for a copy of the letter. Okay. Now, I know your organization provides space for a lot of death row inmates, and you've pointed out that some have been released, um, who um, mm -hmm. the evidence turns out to, enough to allow them to be freed. But do you worry that championing Scott Peterson um, undermines your credibility in this sense, that a lot of these people had underfunded defenses, uh, they weren't able to mm -hmm. investigate, they didn't have proper legal defenses, and yet here, Scott Peterson had one of the most expensive lawyers in the country. Mm -hmm. But uh, certainly, as you're well aware, it's uh, primarily a circumstantial case, if not purely a circumstantial case, with little or no forensic evidence, DNA, uh, witnesses, what have you. In many of the instances where we had uh, someone who was wrongfully convicted, almost 12 people now, uh, who originally wrote us from death row proclaiming their innocence, who have since been released and exonerated through DNA or other means, um, at least in those cases, they had a jailhouse snitch's testimony, they might have had some fabricated evidence, they might have had uh, a wrong, wrong eyewitness statement, but wait, the fact wait, the matter is, they, on, you were, know, they were much more guilty than a, a primarily second. circumstantial case. Well, where you've done a lot of these cases. Or no physical evidence but, whatsoever. You know, you've mm -hmm. done a lot of these cases. Don't give me the nonsense about circumstantial cases. I mean, the bottom line is circumstantial cases mm -hmm. are the strongest cases out there. Eyewitnesses, jailhouse mm -hmm. snitches are the type of testimony mm -hmm. that lead to overturned verdicts because they're so unreliable. In some instances they do, in other instances there have been many individuals who have been executed right. on primarily the same evidence that we've had people exonerated on. Uh, we're not taking the stance of guilt or innocence in Mr. Peterson's case. We're pr primarily allowing him a form to do that on his own, and he has maintained his in innocence since day one. Yeah, I know, but you're also, by saying it's an entirely circumstantial case, and we have all these people who are released with this type but of But it is. Well, it, it may be, mm -hmm. but well, e even, it may be, even but circumstantial lawyer, even, cases, as you know, I'm not saying that this is the strongest case I've ever seen, but circumstantial cases no. are the strongest types of cases. Oh, in, in some instances they can be, but even Judge DeLucci, uh, three quarters through the trial, said if there is a conviction, it's in the appellate lawyer's petri dish. Uh, even he acknowledged the fact that there were so many issues that uh, couldn't fully be substantiated, that it is an appellate lawyer's dream, and there are going to be issues brought up, and he is certain to uh, get an appeal down the road if these issues are properly addressed in yeah. the courts. He'll get an appeal. But again, we don't, we're not... We're not talking about his guilt or innocence on the page. We're allowing him to do that, as we do for 500, uh, 500 other death row prisoners, primarily in the United States, but also in several other countries around the world. All right, Vernell Crittenden, uh, what's Peterson up to these days? Well, good afternoon, Dan. And I just wanted to comment on one statement that was made, and that is here in the state of California, no inmate on death row has been released because of DNA testing. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just thought I'd want to clarify that. And uh, Scott mm -hmm. Peterson is doing well on death row. I was up in death row today just prior to coming to this broadcast, and uh, he's taken down the picture off of his wall, uh, he and Lacey uh, at their wedding. Uh, he's now put another picture up, which is a picture of he and Lacey on vacation, sitting out on a beach. Uh, he seems to be in very, uh, very good spirits. 
uh, we now have him moved over to the East Block, where we house the lion's share of the death row inmates. And we have actually began to identify uh, inmates that are compatible with uh, Scott Peterson that he'll be spending the rest of his life with. I thought you might find interesting uh, just a couple of them I wanted to share with you. Uh, one was a man named uh, um, Ivan Gonzalez from uh, San Diego who came in 1995. He had sexually molested a four-year-old uh, multiple times, and at the point of death, 50% of her body was burned. Uh, he has a, another gentleman that he'll be with is Mike Martinez. Mike Martinez took a mm -hmm. knife and a hammer uh, to a woman and killed her. And then repeatedly now, Mr. Crittenden, is it, is it not a serious daughter. breach of security to be releasing, for the public relations officer at San Quentin, to be released, releasing such detailed information on Mr. Peterson's comings and goings within the prison facility? I understand it's one thing to advise the public how he's checked in, fingerprinted, and escorted to his cell. But getting into such detailed information as to who he's hanging out with in the prison, does that not compromise Mr. Peterson's security? And as an official representative of the California no. Department of All Corrections, right. are you not concerned that giving such detailed information that him respond. compromise the security right, Brunel, of San your Quentin? response? No, it does not. Uh, he is in only in death row, and he is put mm -hmm. in with a group of death row inmates that are all compatible with uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Peterson. And there will be no other inmates that will have access to him. Of the 637 okay. that we have on death row in the state of California, and, none of them... And now the public uh, at large knows threatened. who those individuals are, and they know who is in contact with Mr. Peterson within the facility. So how does that not compromise security? Uh, there's almost the security 65 then? of them that but are... But how, wait, how does it compromise contact. security? I don't even understand theoretically how it would. I mean, he's on death row. Mm-hmm. Well, certainly by knowing who he's hanging right. out with at any given time within the facility, you know, going to yard, the detailed information that's been provided, right. it makes it a lot easier for I, individuals on the outside who wish harm to Mr. Peterson yeah. to contact individuals on the inside who may have close contact right. with him. Right. I got to wrap it up. As far as I'm concerned, it's a serious breach of security. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, I differ with you. I don't well, find that to be a serious breach. Right. We, we I got to break it. We got some quick breaking news here that the uh, shuttle deputy program manager has just announced that they're going to try and fix two pieces of a uh, gap filler dangling um, from the uh, from the space